Are mixed Asian athletes better than full Asian athletes? Let's talk about why the answer to this question is not that obvious. Andrew, there have always been a lot of great Asian athletes and mixed Asian athletes in the sports like golf, tennis, swimming, badminton, baseball, um, soccer. However, Andrew, there's been very little penetration into American contact team sports such as the NBA, NFL, and NHL. However, Andrew, there is a new crop of mixed Asian athletes that are having more success in these fields. And we got to break it down what it means. We got to talk about who they are. And we got to talk about the reasons behind it that might not be as obvious as people think. Yeah. Maybe the answer is not just because they're half white or half black. <laughs> right, because you're saying that, that that's the obvious answer. Yeah, that's probably what you guys are thinking. But anyways, let's get into it, David. First of all, let's shout out to a lot of the mixed Asian athletes right now. Let's start with the Filipinos. They got a lot. Yeah, opening it up, Andrew, we've got Mr. Social Media himself, Ooh, Jordan Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson. Probably one of the most creative ISO shot creators in the NBA, Andrew, he's, uh, I believe, a quarter Filipino, but his mom is half Filipino from the Philippines, so she has more of the culture. And interestingly enough, Andrew, in the Philippines, if you're half, they still consider you pretty much full Filipino. And David, 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 you are forgetting one of the most important things about Jordan Clarkson. He is very cool. Yeah, he's, he's cool. Super, he's one of the swaggiest, like, NBA players, to be honest, and he's got a swaggy game, a lot of crossovers, a lot of ISO moves, kind of a highlight player, but a great role player so as Filipinos well. Filipinos are about the swag. Um, also, he uh, has been known lately for squaring up with people, and even Manny Pacquiao was like, uh, <laughs> I see the potential in him. He's going to be a very good boxer. Uh, you know, his stance is good. He's got the lead foot. He's going to generate a lot of power with the left jab. And someone said, I can't explain it, but the Filipino side of Jordan Clarkson jumped out here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, man, I would compare him to Lou Williams, Jamal Crawford. Also, Andrew, leading off to another swaggy Filipino, part Filipino NBA player, Andrew. We're talking about Jalen Green. Yeah, Jalen Green, guys. Jalen Green's a high flyer. You know, he was in the dunk contest. Let me just play a video of him and Jordan Clarkson. Like, uh, he, he got a different type of swag, though. He got the low-key swag, whereas Jordan Clarkson got more of the hype swag. You know, like Jordan Clarkson's making appearances in side talk NYC videos, being like, we outside. Jalen's more like, yeah, what's up, man? Yeah, so Jalen, uh, comparing the two on how much they care about being Filipino, from what I've seen, Jalen Green actually plays some games in the Philippines, but I think maybe he doesn't talk about Filipino culture as much, but I've actually heard Jordan Clarkson like talk about Lumpia and like because his yeah. mom is straight from there, so maybe, yeah, I, the connection I think it, closer. When it really, like, when you have a mixed family, it really matters whether or not like you go with the mom's culture or the dad's culture or, you know what I mean? Like, it's so variable family to family. I definitely think Jalen Green's still repping it. Um, he uh, reminds me of Zach Levine a mm. lot, and we'll see how his career develops. A ton and ton of potential, even more athletic than Jordan Clarkson. Um, moving on, Andrew, we're still staying in the Filipino lane, but we're moving on to the NFL. Cameron Bynum, yeah. Andrew, uh, recently caught a game-winning uh, interception, I believe, for the Vikings and uh, threw up the Filipino flag afterwards because he's involved in a lot of nonprofits as well. His, his mom is full Filipino, so he's half. And I think that's cool because there have actually always been mixed Asian athletes throughout history, but obviously given a different generation and kind of how the world was, they probably didn't represent as hard as they could have. But nowadays, you know, you have to understand these guys are like 21, 22, 24 years old. Right. So they're just like any other 24-year-old mixed kid. They're probably more proud. Uh, their parent, you know, there's more media. They're, they're more connected them. with the internet and uh, obviously yeah. international travel making trips back and, and exactly. these like pilgrimages back to the your mother's motherland is way more common nowadays yeah um yeah. moving on Andrew, still staying in the filipino section the filipinos got the the yeah. hoppers and the quapas on deck man jason robertson is the leading goal scorer in the nhl right now and he is half filipino and uh half white and i believe andrew he was actually born in arcadia california uh a very, very Asian enclave, but he moved to Michigan because his parents were so committed to putting him in a hockey systems. And Andrew, as you know, Andrew, SoCal doesn't have the, the, the craziest hockey developmental systems around. Let me tell you this. We're going to get into it at the end of this video, but one of the key reasons for these guys going pro is not just because they're mixed race, but literally because their parents supported them to the end but of the earth. But isn't it because the mixed race actually makes them strong? But then... You know, the white or black is more bigger. Stronger. Well, we're going to talk about that later, too, because guess what? There's quite a few full Asian athletes as well. But anyways, going into it, David. Yeah, I mean, J shout out to Jason Robertson. Uh, his brother is also about to make it in the NHL, too, I believe. But he right now is finding a lot of success. Um, Andrew, moving on to the Chinese section, we got to give a shout out to Taylor Rapp. 
Andrew, uh, Taylor Rapp, is, uh, his mom is from Shanghai. His dad is from Canada. I believe he's British. And uh, yeah, man, we uh, did a video with Taylor, and he just had a game ceiling interception recently for the uh, the Rams to win. Obviously, he won a Super Bowl with the Rams. He proposed to his girlfriend on the field, which was also another viral moment. And uh, the difference is, Andrew, he's not going to drape the Chinese flag on his shoulders. After no, <laughs> I think uh, wearing the Chinese flag might have a different connotation. But if there was such thing as a Shanghainese flag, which is his mom's Chinese side, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe that would be cool. But so ultimately, <laughs> yeah, waving the red Chinese flag is just a little different. Right. It well, different it's right interesting now. because there's all these like geopolitical considerations. that. Well, you know, no one's I'm, mad at throwing the Filipino flag. By the way, the Filipino flag does look pretty dope. It's a great flag. Um. Anyways, David, moving on. The Koreans. The Koreans got Oh, no, no. We can't guys. forget Andrew Khalif Raymond. He's half Chinese oh, Vietnamese. He yeah. is a backup wide receiver uh, for the Tennessee Titans. Yo, what's up with mixed guys named Khalif? I know another half black, half Asian guy named Khalif that's also an athlete. But uh, and, and, and the interesting thing about Khalif Raymond, pop up a photo right now. He looks kind of like Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, and he's pretty small, guys. For a wide receiver, he's only like 5'9". Yeah, and that's actually going to play in our recommendations later for like which sports Asians should or should not attempt to go pro in or, you know, invest in those like pathways. Right. Um, moving on, Andrew, to the Korean side, Andrew. Um, we've got Kyle Hamilton is half Korean. He's in the NFL. He's a rookie this year. Um, Andrew, you've also got Young Ho Koo, who's yeah. full Korean. Obviously, he's like probably a top three kicker in the whole NFL. I believe last year he was number one in terms of points scored. Um, Kyler Murray. NFL yeah. superstar is a quarter Korean. David, we got to give a shout out to the Vietnamese. Now, this is a group that was not seeing a lot of representation as far as um, athletes too much. I mean, had you, had, that win. you had that win in the NFL, but but since then, it didn't like break through for a b whole bunch of other Vietnamese until Jalen Williams in the NBA on the OKC Thunder. He's a fourth Vietnamese. But it's, actually, so, it's, it's a strong quarter. Bro. Because his mom is only half Viet, but man, it's a he looks about half Let himself. Let me just zoom in on his face. Look at that smile, guys. Come on. Him next to Chet. And then there's actually another Jalen Williams on the team, but it's spelled differently, and he's not Asian. But this guy's Asian right here. This guy... Uh, and I believe Johnny Juzang is half Vietnamese as well. Yeah, but Johnny he, he's Juzang. He's in the G League right now. He's not in the NBA yet, but I do think he's going to get some And Johnny NBA Juzang minutes. actually has a brother who plays pro basketball in Vietnam and went to Harvard. I'm thinking, hey, man, Jeremy Lin went to Harvard. One of the Juzang brothers played basketball at Harvard. David, we got to talk about the Japanese players. Yeah, man. and we're going to have a lot of takeaways from this because obviously there's a lot of Japanese American players are, that are half in the NHL. I'm sorry we're not going to get to them. Um, but, Andrew, there's actually Rui Hachimura, who is half African, half Japanese, produced from Japan. There's also Yuta Watanabe, who's leading the NBA mm -hmm. in three-point percentage right now. Obviously, he's not taking the crazy shots, the ISO combo combos. He's mostly spotting up in the corner. But um, there's also players in the G League that are full Japanese, Yudai Baba. Mm. Um, but the reason this is relevant, Andrew, is because it sort of brings us to our final takeaways because a lot of people are going to be like, hey, guys, of course these guys are in the uh, NBA, NHL, you know, whatever, whatever, NFL, because they're half white or half black. And most of those leagues are pretty much made up of white and black people. However, Andrew, what is the reason for all these incredible full Japanese players coming out of the Japanese system? And whether they're full Japanese or not, like Rui, like they were still developed skill-wise within internally within Japan. Well, David, it sounds like it has something to do with the great Japanese sports systems that they have there. Yeah. They literally have probably the best sports systems of all of Asia. Not surprising, it's Japan, right? I mean, they probably have the best, a lot of things in Asia, to right. They're be the furthest along. They've been the first world yeah. nation for the longest, multi-generational. But when you look at the Japanese athletes, even going to baseball, I know we're not talking about baseball in this right, video. Right, because it's a non-contact sport. Tons yeah. of baseball players, tons of soccer players, um, tons of every other non-contact sport player, right? And Korea, so, Korea doing well as yeah. well. Now but they're Japan not really like they're not producing. Let's be honest, any American football players, but that's because I don't think that they have any American football systems in Japan really to harness that talent. But I did look it up, Andrew. They do have some CFL players from Japan. Uh, okay, okay. So, so they could. I mean, they'd have to like dominate in the CFL to to justify a, a big being brought up. But man, I think at the end of the day. It really goes to show you, Andrew, obviously there is a genetic component when it comes to certain sports, especially the NBA. You have to be tall and you have to be long. Even in the NHL, Andrew, the average NHL professional is 6'1 and bulky muscular. That's going to be another partial genetic thing. I mean, we're talking about the NFL. You have to be strong. Maybe you don't have to be super tall, but you got to be fast and strong. Yeah, you have to be like at another level of like musculature and, and staying injury free. And I and guess like that's that. the reason why, real quick, that we're talking about these three sports. It's not that we don't know other sports exist and there's not amazing athletes. I mean, one of the best soccer players in the entire world is Korean. 
from from Korea, Sun right. Hung Min, right? But I'm just saying, I guess because we're talking about these sports that rely so heavily on, on being tall right? and being strong, which maybe soccer doesn't as much. So I guess that's why it is important to talk about these contact sports. Yeah, and I think out, uh, at the end of the day, of course the genetic plays into it, and that's where being mixed may give you a larger build on a statistical probability sure. basis. However, it actually more so, in my opinion, comes down to systems and investments and how much are you the LeVar ball of your child doing that thing? How much do you as a parent or do your parents care about you playing that sport? Because I'll tell you this, there are some great full Asian athletes. Jeremy Lin, you know his story. First of all, shout out to him. He did kind of win the genetic lottery of his family. He turned out to be 6'3 and fast. However, even without the extreme support of his parents and their passion for basketball, how was he ever going to make it to the NBA, bro? They would create new AAU teams for him. They were um, supporting his traveling. Yeah, they went way above Dude. and beyond. I mean, let's just say they were at like an 11 Trust out of 10. And, you know, first of all, love my parents so much. They were probably, in terms of supportiveness about me playing basketball, not that I was ever going to be that good anyway, it was like a two out of ten. And I would, They told me not to play. And yeah. let's be honest, guys, there's a ton of white and black and everybody else type of color athletes that are amazingly athletic, but they don't make it to the pros either for a number of reasons. Not because their upbringing, their focus, their family issues, or they just didn't work hard enough. They didn't have the family support. They didn't have the community support. There's so many things that can wreck you along the way. So that's what I'm saying. Even if you're born with or without that exact ideal body for the sport, you still have to have the passion and the support from your family to pursue it. Yeah, in Japan, obviously, they do a really good job having a farm system where people are able to pursue their sport with, like, all their heart. But here's the thing. I think because they're a first-world country that has good education systems, they feel like, man, if I go to college and I play this sport but I don't make it pro, I still, like can have a career and people will still value me in the society and I still am like educated David, enough to have a profession. We know some Asian guys who played sports growing up. They're having kids now. They got some boys and the talk around them is so funny because they're like, dude, you know, I'm tall. My wife's tall, man. I got big hopes for him and, and, and I'm trying to I'm push look, him I'm looking sports. at his limbs. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to see his limb to body torso ratio. I'm, I'm going to be pushing basketball and soccer yeah. balls at him and I, I need to see, man. I, I, I think the one overlooked sport for Asian Americans is the NFL. Because I think a lot of people are scared because of CTE and the body and the injury concerns. They could be a kicker. They could be a wide receiver. Yeah. They could be, you know, a safety where, you know, it's not as, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but it's not to the same level of bone crushingness. Exactly. And it's funny because we love the NBA and a lot of other Asians love the NBA. Now, I have to be honest, David, we love the NBA and a lot of Asians love the NBA, but it is one of the hardest sports for full Asians to succeed in yeah. because it is so much based on length and quickness and height. Not only that, the teams are small. When you talk about an NFL team, there's 32 teams and 53 players on a roster. That's a lot of potential spots and a lot of potential opportunities on a basketball team. What is there, 30 teams? And then there's only, what, 12 to 15 players max? Yeah, the only reason I didn't say NHL is because I do think it's like, look at what Jason Robertson's parents had to do, you know, move him to Michigan to find the systems because most yeah. of the systems are in Canada and Russia and, you know, icy countries for development. That's going to be like pretty tough pill for a lot of people to swallow. Yeah. You could get good at football anywhere in a hot climate, a cold climate, any climate. No, it's true. Like, let's say you're trying to be really good at hockey in Texas or New Mexico. Even if you got the athleticism and the passion for it, you still might have to physically move to an area yeah. that has more of those systems. Yeah, there's a reason why some of the even talented U.S. soccer players move to Europe because Europe has by far the better competition to train exactly. for soccer. I mean, at the end of the day, Andrew, how important is it to have mixed Asian representation? Is it kind of like not that serious? Is it serious? Obviously, for example, you know, Indian Americans, they don't have a lot of pro athletes, but they have a lot of CEOs. You know, uh, Jewish Americans, you know, have a lot of CEOs, not that many pro athletes. Is this something that people should care about? Should they not care about? Is it family to family? I mean, I think different people and different individuals are going to care about it on different levels. Obviously, if you value sports, you're into sports, then of course you're going to value it. And I do think that, especially for men, there's this whole like masculinity thing. Or where you're sort of blue collar respect, yeah, right? We, because there's a correlation between sort of the, the contact, the high level of contact and the size of the ball versus smaller. Like the golf balls are tiny. Nobody's fighting on the golf course. Football is a gigantic ball. People fight all the time in football. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, I think that uh, there is some respect to be gained, and that, that's why shout-out to all the Asian fighters, whether they're boxers or MMA oh. or one championship fighters. Like, they are letting people know that Asians because Because like, you would guess that a lot of people would say that Asians would be better at the smaller ball sports, right? Badminton, 
golf, just basically tennis. They, they wouldn't think pong. that they could compete in the like kill or be killed yeah, sports. The straight warrior sports, which is you know football, fighting, even basketball on a lesser extent, you know. But yeah, I mean, basically, you know, you guys let us know in the comments down below how it, important it is for you to see Asian athletes or part Asian athletes, you know, and how do you feel about how and the part Asian athletes- how important is it athletes- for them once they get on to represent, even though it probably like, you know, wasn't as much of the side that like led them into pro sports. If hey, I man. had to guess, I'm and not David, saying- maybe all those uh, rice plates and chicken adobo, man, may- maybe that's what propelled these guys. Or maybe maybe Jalen Williams was eating pho, you hey. know, to keep his weight down instead. <laughs> hey, Khalif Raymond in the NFL, he said he eats rice all the time. Hey, he calls I, himself Asian American. I know Taylor Rapp eats eat some Chinese food. You know, maybe not only. I see him eat a lot of steak, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to hybrid it. You, you got to bulk. You got to bulk. But anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. That is your Asian uh, mixed Asian athlete update. I we know did not we- get to cover everybody. Those were just the ones that came to mind and uh, we had the assets for. So huge shout out to everybody. Let us know in the comment section below. Shout out to Amazing Sports, by the way, too. Yeah. Check them out. And shout out to AsianPlayers.com. Also, let us know any other mixed Asian athletes that are upcoming that might get pro soon uh, that we should know about because I-, I love to see, you know, you guys know some names that we don't. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we are the Hot Pop Boys and we out. Peace. Peace.